Hey everybody, Ron Metris again. I was going through my collection of meteorites the other day and I realized I own quite a few palisites. So they're, some are pretty nice. So I thought I'd uh, just do a video kind of focusing on those and kind of highlight them. So let's get to it. Our first piece is a 636 gram slice of Semchon. It's polished on both sides and there's not much translucence to this one since it is quite thick. If it was thinner, it would be more translucent, but I just love this piece. It's one of my favorites. It's also my largest. This is a 361 gram slice of Semchon. It's a little bit smaller, but it's etched on both sides. It's not polished like the last piece. It's got a little bit more translucent because it's a little thinner, but still not very much. It's still quite thick for being translucent. It's about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. This is a piece of Semchon, but it's a mesosiderite, which means it has about half metal, half crystal. It's just lovely. I love the pattern on this one. If you look at it closely, you can see the grain structure there. If my phone will focus properly. Yeah, let's turn it over. Both sides are polished. There's no translucence on this piece though. Still one of my early favorites. Now this is also a piece of Semchon. It's a little different. It's a solid stone, uncut. I don't see any crystals on the outside, so I'm guessing it's probably all siderite. But I wanted to have a piece to show my outreach students what a meteorite can look like on the outside versus the inside. And this is a prime example of showing, you know, the kind of rough exterior and the beautiful interior of all the other slices. So this is a nice piece. I bought this in Tucson a few years ago. Here's another piece of Semchon. This one was beautiful. I like this one so much I decided to put it in a frame and hang it on the wall. I also backlit it. And the results were pretty cool. There we go. That's the backlight. If I turn this other light off, it shows up a little bit better. I just love this piece. Here we have a Brenham cut on two sides, polished on both sides, and it has one side with crust on it. So we have a nice piece and it's stable. I've had this on my shelf for a couple of years with no rust issues. And this is just a beautiful little brown I bought some years ago. Very shiny. This is a 118 gram piece of Admire. It's behind glass and getting a lot of glare. Got this in Tucson about four years ago from the pe people over at KD Meteorites. Completely stabilized and has a lot of translucence, so I backlit it, and this is what happens. It's got a lot of I've got orange and greens and yellows in some places. Just beautiful. This is my first attempt at, at backlighting something. Um, I overbuilt it like crazy, and it shows. But it still came out very nice. This is a special piece. It's an Esquel, 38.7 grams. Literally thought I would never be able to own one of these pieces. I got this from Ann Black about three years ago. Thank you, Ann. I love this piece. Um, it's been on my wall now for a couple of years. And again, it's backlit. And the results of, of doing that are spectacular. There it is right there. It's probably the most translucent piece I have. This is a 61.5 gram of Imolac. It's got a nice, beautiful etched face, highly polished, beautiful crystal structure, and it's an end cut. Not only an end cut, but there's a hole through it where I believe the crystal fell out. Uh, there's the hole from the other end right there. Lots of crystals showing on the outside, a lot of cavities. This almost looks like a 
calcite skeleton, except it's got crystals on the front of it. So I get the best of both worlds. Now here is one of the more unique pieces in my collection. This is an unoxidized piece of Hakata. Because you can tell because it's shiny. It's not doesn't have that, that matte finish that most of the other huck that you see. It's 32.2 grams. Bought this from Blaine Reed about two years ago in Denver before COVID hit. But it's uh, got a nice exterior. Uh, you can see some of the grains coming through the crystal grains here and there. But the point is, is that it, this is one of the larger pieces that exist uh, that are unoxidized and everything else has been oxidized into magnetite and hematite. I see a lot of it, but uh, not this nice. Here we have a 108 gram slice of Saracho. I bought this in Tucson the first year it was made available to the public. It's nice, thinly cut. However, there's no translucence to this piece. It's etched on both sides. Nice finish. And I haven't had any issues with rusting, so that's good. I know some of these do rust. This is a 558 gram whole stone Saracho. I bought this from ET a couple of years ago. The first year the Saracho's were at the show in Tucson. He had a whole box of this stuff sitting on his desk out there, and I spent about an hour going through it. And I happened to see this piece sitting off to the side. It was being used as a paperweight to hold out a pile of papers. Um, I just fell in love with it. It was by far the best piece he had. All these metal blebs showing through. There's some crystals coming through. And it's stable. That's the best part. It's not one of the rusters that you see. It's a very nice piece. This is a 39.4 gram piece of spring water that I got just about a year ago in, in Denver. It's not only a beautiful slice, but it's also an end cut. So you get some of the crystals coming out the back. And it just shows the outside crust and there's some crystals sparkling in the light there. Nice little piece. It's one of those kind of special ones I didn't think I'd ever own. This is a 185 gram slice of Brenham. As you can see, it's all siderite. It's etched on both sides. This is, the, this is the better side, I believe. I like this little area right here. It kind of it's, sets it apart. This is the other side. Not a bad slice. It's also very thin, maybe oh, one and a half millimeters roughly. Nicely cut. Nice overall piece. Thank <laughs> you.